my name is James Moore and I lead the drawing workshop at the Felna Gluck Festival each year on Inishir. What is wonderful about Felna Gluck or the Festival of Stone is that it is the coming together of so many people from all over the world. And they all share a love of the island or the stone or, or the stone wall tradition. You may come to the island not knowing anybody, anybody, but by the time you leave, you will have had many a laugh and shared many a conversation with people who are no longer strangers, but probably friends. We love drawing on Inishir because there is such rich pickings for the artist. There is the stunning natural beauty of the island, its flora and fauna, its rocky landscape, its incredible skies and seashore and the ever-present sea. And there, of course, is the rich, incredibly rich, built environment, a labyrinth of dry stone walls determined about the size and shape of hundreds of cracked limestone and green fields, often empty, but sometimes filled with horse or cattle, sheep or goats. And walls mark the roads and lanes and the boreens that crisscross the island. They're, they're alive in a way, rhythmically alive, as they follow the contours of the land, always working with the landscape. They are perfect for the flowing pen or brush of the artist. You could try to replicate the rich leather textures of the rusting hulk of the Plassey or the lace-like silhouette of a stone wall against the sky. Diverse shapes of all kinds await the hungry pen or pencil. Capture that crow with a deaf line or freeze that seagull with a, a photo and draw it at your leisure. Explore the sensual lines and shapes of an old boat with its colourful paintwork and orange boys, delight in the line, revel in the texture, marvel at the beauty. Following the footsteps of artists like Harry and Margaret Clark and their friend Sean Keating, who were all inspired by Inishir's natural beauty and her elusive sense of Irishness. So why not create a picture of your own based on the island? or a memory of the island from a photograph or from imagination. When we draw, we make marks, usually on a page. So the following tutorial describes a variety of mark-making tools and techniques using ink on paper. And they should help you to capture something of the variety of the line and texture that exist on the island. And we hope these techniques will serve you well as you make your own marks. Good luck and enjoy the journey. You will need the following. Some watercolour paper, some ink, some gauze, a separate container to combine the gauze and ink, some sticks, a blade, a cutting board, a candle, some water, a separate container to mix water and ink. Some paint brushes. Okay, you can see we have here uh, our blade, which we use to shape our sticks. Um, this this is a wedge-shaped stick, and uh, basically you uh, cut it into a wedge shape on both sides, and then you using I use a cutting board to uh, get a nice straight edge. So that needs to sit flat, you know, sit flat on the paper. I'll show you that in action in a minute. The other is just basically a point, you know. You can make it as thick or thin a point as you wish. Okay, so then, of course, we have our ink. Bottle of ink. Uh, this is a watertight container. Very important when you're transporting ink. So, the other thing, this is a really neat little trick. This is a container. And now inside of this container, I'm just going to use this to drag it out a bit, <clears throat> we have some bunched up gauze that's absolutely saturated with ink. But the great thing about this uh, gauze is that it doesn't leak. It acts like a bog, as I said, a reservoir for your ink. So really neat. Um, that's, you know, kind of gauze you get in a chemist. I've soak this in ink and this is our kind of more pointy stick and we're going to give this a go and see what kind of a mark this will make. So it's great for doing you know organic shapes creates an interesting line. 
this case. It's like a dip, you know how a dip pen works. But you can twist it as well, get, get different kinds of uh, effects. But the, the line is, is very um, organic and if you put it on its edge a bit, you see what's happening there? It's, uh, it's creating texture. And you can drag it on its edge. Okay, let's give, give you an idea to get this the kind of internal texture of, of, a, of a tree, for example. Now, <clears throat> let's have a look at the wedge. <clears throat> the wedge shaped. Kind of dip it into our reservoir of ink. This is great for straight lines. Let's have a go. I just put it on the page, it'll kind of rest there and I drag it down. Imagine it's like some sort of garden shed. Now, if I, there's a window, let's say there's a window on the shed. Watch this now, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna just drag this down. Might take a few goes. That's one window pane. Drag that down a little bit, give it a bit of, a bit of texture underneath the windowsill, like maybe a bit of shadow running into some damp. It's like the base of the shed, the top of the shed, let's say it's a flat roof shed. Kind of get the idea. Um, so, you, you know, using both of these tools, you can begin to, you know, do some more organic shapes. Maybe there's some vegetables in the garden or some flowers. You know, you can use it and hold it and just keep twiddling it and start to get interesting things, you know. It's really organic. It's the, the pleasure of using these types of things, these kind of materials, is to they do their own thing. You know, they're a surprise. So we're going to use this candle here. Uh, this is like a, a wax candle. You could use a crayon as well. Or it's, the, it's the concept of oil and water do not mix. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw with this. Now you're not going to really see anything at the moment, but you know it should become more apparent in uh, in a few moments. Now the next thing we need is a paintbrush. Um, I'm just going to use a flat paintbrush, it doesn't really matter at this point. And some, I'm going to get some water and I'm going to put it into this little container here. Okay, just a little drop like that. Now, I'm going to go back to my little reservoir and dip my paintbrush in. It's going to be quite cover it in some ink. Then I'm going to dilute it a bit. I'm going to use this ink and I'm going to just paint with it over this tree area like this. You might notice what's happening. So the areas that we leave, uh, that we painted wax on, they, they, uh, they they don't take up the, the water in the same way. Now that's that's quite a dark mix. I'm just going to use this is this is a very useful device or a useful tool, which is kitchen roll. I'm just going to drop draw dry off a little bit of that. It's a bit it's a bit strong. I might put a bit more water into the mix. So I'm going to put a little bit. On this windowsill here, because it's like an old windowsill and it's kind of weathered. See how it doesn't, it won't stick to the 
candle. I'm just going to dry off a little bit of that. It's just, it's, it's a nice thing to, to use just to give extra a little bit of texture. Or... Okay, so the other thing I'm just going to use is a paintbrush, another paintbrush. But this time, this is a, I think it's called a filbert basically. Uh, it's a, a tapered edge. And uh, the uh, Chinese use these a lot. Um, might actually use a slightly smaller one. It's a thicker one, thicker version. And I'm going to just hold it right at its edge. Okay, I know that drip, don't worry about that. And, uh, I'm just going to begin to paint. And there's a bit of shadowy area. What's nice about the, uh, using a paintbrush like this is it, you can get very, very nice marks. Quite delicate marks, in fact. Uh, so we're just kind of delineating the the form of the the, uh, the tree there with some bit of shadow around it. Just gonna put a. You can get very delicate marks just using the tip, almost like you're almost told if you hold it just over the top of the paper like that and quite, you know, vertically above it. So you can, you can then lift and push. So I'll just do a bit of lifting and pushing. First I'll push. So as I push it goes down and gets broader and splodges. As I pull up, gets more delicate so you can get very delicate lines and very fluid movements you can literally write with this you can get even more delicate paintbrushes than this but you get the idea okay so that's the paintbrush and using some wax. Let's actually use a bit more wax here liberally just to play around with it some more. Get a bit more, more texture. Okay, so the, um, leave that there for a minute to dry. Okay, so uh, this is the kind of final kind of technique or tip. I'm just going to use some water. This is just water on a paintbrush, you know. And I'm just going to let it soak into the page here a bit. I'm just drag it into, into the ink here. Hopefully that ink is dry enough by now. Just to do a bit of that. We're going to use paintbrush uh, to make a mark in a watery wet section and see what happens so maybe just we'll throw in a drop see if anything happens see that that could be the beginning of a flower so we'll do a couple of those Um, so, st stick, we're going to use the stick. I'm going to start off with uh, the wedge shape, see what happens. Oh, okay. See that? The top of it blooms that way. It's really quite nice. Okay, I'm actually going to use a little bit more water there because it's slightly too much off. And let's go back in there. We'll try the, I'll try this fella just to point. Ooh, interesting. So you can see you're beginning beginning to create different kinds of textures. 
so you can you can use uh, you know you know the, you know contrast the kind of dry areas with those areas. So play around, you know, have fun, um, you know, chop and change these kind of techniques, and you know, see what happens. We'd like to invite you to join us and share your own experiences of in the shear through drawing. You can either follow the ideas and techniques in this short video or use your own creative mark making ideas to capture your own memories of in the shear and fail in the look. Email us a digital version of your cre cre creation and we will include it on the in the shear website.